What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking in on an old favorite called Star Sector, which continues to get better. They just had a giant patch that adds a whole bunch of narrative and storylines to the game, which I think is a great addition, because this is a sandbox space RPG, the likes of which does not exist anywhere else on the internet. Uh, this is one of those games where I think that it's a big problem with space sandboxes, that frequently enough, they tend to over-promise and under-deliver, under -deliver. and Star Sector, to me, has never felt like one of those games as an avid space game fan. If I had to describe to people that have never seen this game before what it is, it's basically space pirates and zombies. If somebody went nuts with space pirates and zombies and just added a ridiculous amount of content to it, another good thing to call it would be, let's call it Mountain Blade in space. Uh, this is a game where you are building up an army or you're building up a fleet, you're fighting enemies, you're leveling up, you're doing missions, you're surveying planets, you're building colonies, you're doing all sorts of things along the way, but instead of having Huskarls or Mamluks or, you know, Swadian knights that follow you around and help you enforce your will, upon the overall galaxy map. In this game, you're building a battle fleet that's going to be comprised of fighters. It's going to be comprised of frigates and corvettes and cruisers and carriers and gunboats. And like, you name it, this game has it. This game has a huge amount of customization, an enormous amount of ships, and once you've got that fleet built, it allows you to kind of just cut loose in the galaxy and do whatever you want. If you want to be a peaceful trader, you can absolutely do that. If you want to scrum it up like I'm doing right now and I'm fighting some pirates and I'm liquidating them from the galaxy and getting paid a large bounty for it, you can absolutely do that as well. If you want to be a planet surveyor, if you want to be an explorer, you can do all of those things. And really the thing that's come across from Star Sector over the last, I guess the game started development in like 2013 or 2013, 2014. This is one of the few games that just continues to deliver, deliver on promises and do it in kind of a seamless and smooth and bugless sort of way. This is one of those games that I have almost no negative emotions assigned to this game. I think there's like one or two things about this game that I think other games do better, but they are largely UI related. Other than that, all of the gameplay and all of the content and all of the stuff that you could do are utterly fantastic. And I firmly believe that if you're looking for a space sandbox and you don't mind the fact that it's got top-down graphics like Space Pirates and Zombies, uh, this is the game that every space fan should own. Just due to the absolutely absurd amount of hours that you can put into it, and also the fact that once you get done putting that enormous amount of hours into the game, it's also moddable. And so there's everything from Star Wars mods to you name it out there. There's all kinds of things that you can do. This little guy is really not wanting to die. He's running from me over here and I'm getting separated from the rest of my battle group. And that makes me feel a little bit nervous. Now I decided to open this video on a high point inside of a big battle because this is a game where you never quite know when your next battle's gonna come. And I'm gonna be sitting here recording the game for like the next hour to try to get like good footage and give you a nice cross section of all the activities that you could do inside of this game and maybe convince you to go check the game out. If you do decide to check the game out, I do have a link for you. It's down below in the description. It goes to the developer's website actually. This developer has never felt the need to release on Steam. His game has had such a large amount of popularity that he could just self-host off of his website. And while the website does look kind of tech 1.0 sketchy, uh, I can attest that I bought the game from there and it's been years and everything has been perfectly fine. The, the transaction was super secure. There's never been a problem or anything that I've ever had to worry about. I would never recommend you guys go purchase a game from a website that I myself didn't trust. Uh, but everything about this game seems to be on the up and up. Oh, there's a big guy over here. Let's see if we can knock them shields down. Uh, in this game, all your ships basically have two meters. They have flux and they have hull. Flux goes up whenever your shields take damage and whenever you fire a weapon, it's basically heat. When it maxes out, you get basically overloaded and you're stunned for like 10 seconds, so you don't want to let that happen. You can vent the heat if you want, and then the bar underneath that is their hull, which is rapidly going to start diminishing. In the bottom left-hand corner, you can see my weapon or my ship's loadouts, all that green text down there to the right of the model of our ship that's rotating. Those are all my different weapon subgroups. And it's not uncommon for ships in this game to have five, eight different guns on them. And you can set them up to link fire, just like in Mech Warrior. You can set them up to like chain fire, auto fire, whatever you want them to do. You can also fully play this game as an RTS. Uh, if you don't want to 
control a ship and you feel like that's not fun to you, you don't have to. Uh, you could control this game from an over-the-top map like an RTS and just tell these guys go attack over there, you guys go attack over there, and you can treat it like an auto-battler if you want. It'll be a lot less effective than throwing down and fighting on your own if you're a decent pilot. But in the case of my skills, I suck at this game, so like... Auto battling is probably only very slightly less efficient than having me take over the controls ourselves. Now, these guys were fighting down to the south here. These aren't even combat ships. These are actually freighters that have been converted for combat, which means they suck at it. Uh, it means they're really, really bad at it. In general, there's kind of like these hybrid ships in this game that are like part freighter and like part fighter craft or like part battle frigate. They tend to kind of be like, eh, they're good for like getting your inventory space up. But in general, you kind of want to hide and shield them in combat as much as you possibly can. The final enemy is about to go down, and I am very excited to show you Star Sector today. We've actually wrapped up the fight right there, so let's go ahead and bail on out, and we'll start talking about all the things that make Star Sector awesome. Because this is a game that I am especially passionate about, and I think everybody else should be passionate about it too. Because this is a project that not only has a lot of promise, but has also fulfilled a lot of that promise in a very smooth, satisfying, and polished way, even in its early access. I lost two, man, I lost my hammerhead and it got two D mods on it, that sucks. Every time you lose a vehicle and it gets blown up, it gets a permanent defect added to it that just makes it kind of like suck. And so anyways, we're gonna have to like replace these ships. A lot of my ships actually need to be replaced around now. There are very few remaining that don't have like D mods on them right this second but let's go ahead and we will harry their retreat and then we will consider ship recovery obviously i want my hammerhead back it looks like we've also got a mule combat freighter in there we've got the phase assault frigate don't really care about that uh, but i want my i want my hammerhead back i gotta spend story points to recover my own hammerhead that's a odd thing strange uh, after we get done killing enemies as well we will get a whole bunch of loot because this game is all about what you can take home with you in order to earn some cash we got 129 supplies what are supplies uh, supplies are anything and everything required in order to make your ships function and your fleet run smoothly we've also got fuel over here fuel is a good thing because it allows us to go in between sectors and find new jobs and kind of move around there's heavy machinery over here the heavy machinery is responsible for surveying and salvaging so you need to have like the requisite amount of heavy machinery on board if you decide to salvage a whole bunch of enemy fleets and stuff otherwise bad stuff's gonna happen now this guy's got backup he's got some friends that want to jump in and cause problems I don't really care about that because I just got paid $30,000 for tackling that fleet and I got to film a super rad intro that's going to get people all just like wiggling their seats for what Star Sector is. Uh, but yeah, inside this sandbox, what kind of things can you do in Star Sector? Well, really anything that they've ever made a Star Trek episode about you can do in this game. You can fly around and let's take a look. This is the system map right here, but if we wanted to take it up to the sector map, that's the entire game world right there, and we're right inside of this little pocket in Corvus. This is the bubble, or the nebula, or whatever you want to call it, the cluster. I call it the bubble just because I played way too much Elite Dangerous, and so the bubble effectively denotes that this is the populated area of space where people live at, and inside that area there are factions fighting each other, they are vying for control, and they are trying to take over everything and you've got different factions that come in different flavors i mean you've got the totalitarians you've got the dystopian space corporate governments you've got like the freedom loving guys you've got just about everything up in there so that you can make an educated decision as to the faction that you want to side with but i think there's like four or five factions everything from religions to corporations to you know military hegemonies it just kind of depends what flavor of space fighting you like and you can actually sign a commission with those factions to fight other their factions blow up their stations take them over you can colonize planets in this game uh, you can go out and you can space mine stuff you can go bounty hunt you can fight with enemies there's storylines now as of this patch uh, that's actually what this patch was focused on was adding a whole bunch of storylines to the game so that it's no longer just kind of like a sterile sandbox no nay never now there's actually like storylines that you can follow uh, for like some of the religions and some of the major players so that it'll flesh out the galaxy a little bit better i gotta offload all the crap that we just took from that fight so we'll go ahead and do that we'll confirm it we're sitting at like two hundred thousand dollars right now 
that's not too bad. Probably repair my ship at the dockyard just to get it done instantaneously so that I can get a head count on my supplies. We've got 200 supplies left. So what are the core basic functions of this game? Well, you fly around the galaxy. This hot bar down here is different things that your fleet can do. Uh, so those are specific activities like going dark, turning off your transmitter. I mean, you've got a transponder over here that handshakes with all other ships that you're flying around. If you don't have a transponder on, people can't identify you and they get really hostile because they think you're up to something. We've got afterburners. We can take off fast. We've got interdiction pulses that allow us to shut down the enemy's engines with like EMP waves so that we can catch them and fight them. All kinds of goodies up inside of here, but the money stuff that you want to be like really informed about is on this left hand side you've got your fuel. When that runs out, you don't lose fuel when you're inner system, but when you're exosystem and you're out in the sector flying through warp space, uh, you lose fuel. That's how you get in between locations. Supplies, they repair your ships. Uh, so you know how like in Mountain Blade people have to heal after combat and they have to kind of like get better? Same thing in this game. That's condensed down into this number right here which is called fleet readiness. Uh, the higher your fleet readiness is, the longer you can fight in combat and the better your stats are but you know it's up to you how long you want to stay in after every fight you're gonna to have to restore this and it's gonna cost you a lot of supplies you got your money up here uh, you've got your scan your sensor profile how big your fleet is you've got like the fleet wide hull and armor status all kinds of goodies up in here it's kind of no wonder they have a standing bounty on these dudes out here some of these pirate fleets are actually pretty chunky they're faster than me, too, which is really upsetting. Who is this little fleet right here? Uh, yeah, that's a pretty... I mean, that fleet looks gnarlier than it actually is because, like, three of those big ships that he has are, like, trash bin ships. And it's a whole bunch of little ships. And I think we pop the little ships no problem. The big issue there is going to be the guy in the top left that looks like a Star Destroyer. He's, like, actually a problem. Like, that's a ship that can actually, like, do bad things to you and make your feelings hurt. Let's go back and we'll spend some of this money that we got from fighting pirates because there's a standing bounty on all pirate kills in this sector because they're having a huge problem with brigandry. Uh, we get paid for everybody that we kill, every head that we take. And so I'm going to go back and actually spend some of this money to maybe expand my fleet and maybe get a new ship. We'll take a look at like the outfitting and the way that that all works. I don't know how long this episode's gonna be, but we're gonna cruise around the galaxy and see what kind of trouble we can get into. We've got, let's see, let's go and we'll trade goods. We'll go to the fleet menu. You guys got any decent ships around here? Every single transaction that you orchestrate in this game is gonna be either on the open market or the black market. Uh, open market, it's totally legal stuff. Nobody cares. Black market, you want to buy from there. You can absolutely do that too. Just make sure that you don't have uh, your transponder on when you buy from the black market. Otherwise, you can get caught. The police tend to get upset when you pull up in your brand new pirate, you know, cruiser that's got a whole bunch of skeletons chained and impaled to the front of the rig. I like this mule combat freighter over here. He's got like an omni shield on him and he only costs like 40 grand. The downside is that I'm kind of like, I could buy that wolf frigate right there too. Hmm. Do I have any wolves that are like scuffed up that have like D mods on them that maybe we want to get rid of? So he's fitted out. He's not fit. Wait, that Nostos right? This guy's not fitted out. We're going to have to put some guns on him. All right, let's go to the gun menu. So everything in this game is basically there are slots. Uh, I don't really customize too much in this game. I'll be honest with you. Uh, the layout of this UI right here, I find it not overwhelming, but I find it too busy. And I think that keeps me from engaging with it, which is really odd because this is the only game that happens with. When it comes to like Mech Warrior or it comes to other games, I'm a huge tinkerer. Like I tinker with things nonstop down to like decimal points of DPS and whatnot. But with this game, I just auto fit everything because I find the whole UI to be a little non navigable. I don't know. Uh, we got to fit this guy out with a gun and then we need to go and see if we can buy something else. Luckily, the game comes with like four or five presets for every ship that have like labels for what they do, like whether they're for attack or for defense or for whatever else. And so they tend to work out all right. If I was playing against other players, I assume I'd probably have to interact with the customization a lot more, but womp womp. Uh, I would like to buy a new ship. Yeah, let's buy this mule over here. I got plenty of story points to get myself out of trouble, so I'm not that worried about it. There you go. We bought ourselves a new mule and we are now being tracked by the authorities. That means that they... 
they, they, they saw me making little purchases. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to, like, emergency burn the hell up out of here and just kind of, like, get away from them. They are also emergency burning to try to catch me. But I think I'm going to outrun them. Yep, definitely going to outrun them. Let's turn on the sustain burn. If I can get my acceleration going. Uh-oh, there's pirates over here. Not great. Not great. We'll do, like, a special move over here to get away from them. And we'll keep on trucking. We'll flip a little Yui over here. And I think we just escaped. Dude, that was some thug life stuff right there, man. We just ran an entire patrol into a giant flock of pirates in order to escape the fact that we just bought an illegal, an illegal ship. I don't know if they'll let me land there now. They might be kind of cranky about it. So it might be better for us to head to the fringe jump point And let's go find another sector to be in because I'm a space outlaw now, ma. Being a space outlaw and a really bad guy is like a totally acceptable way to play this game. So don't feel bad about it. Man, you guys got fleets everywhere, don't you? Okay, yeah, this pirate sector is getting a little hot and spicy. I think we just got a special maneuver out of it. Luckily, I haven't spent any of my story points like the entire time that I've been playing the game. So I have like a dozen of them. So we'll go through the jump point real fast. But yeah, this neighborhood does have problems with pirates, don't it? So now that we're in warp space, uh, what activities are there to undertake in this game? There's all kinds of activities, actually, and you can find them inside the Intel tab down here. So if you go to Intel, you can find a list of every single open activity in the entire game, narrative or procedurally generated or otherwise. This menu right here is the magnificent creation that I think keeps this game afloat. Having to actually fly around and requisition or inquire about activities in this game would be very expensive and very long-winded. And so it was tremendously kind of the developers to create a menu that shows you all the stuff there is to do. So there are some new missions over here. However, I have a mission right here to go survey a volcanic world. And that volcanic world is kind of down here in the corner. So what I would like to do is, where is the last gas that I can fill up on before we head out? All right, so our nearest gas station is in Magek. That means we just want to autopilot our way on over there. We'll kick on the sustained burn. Turn off your transponder when you're in warp space. For all intents and purposes, this is lawless area. Like, this is the open sea, basically. And so anybody can attack anybody out here. It doesn't even matter. Like, there's, there's no penalty. Like, there's, like, no reputation out here in warp space, basically. Uh, so turn off your transponder, because you don't want people to find you. That's bad. Uh, we've run out of supplies. That's a little bit of a bummer. But we'll jump on into the system while turning our transponder on to make sure that law enforcement understands that we are not bad people trying to do bad things. Nope, I'm just a traveler on the road trying to, like, Phantom 409, Phantom 309. I don't know, I'm just trying to whoop whoop, like, make my way across the galaxy without any problems. And everybody else seems to have an issue with it. Pulling on into Akamon Station? Enterprise Station. Let's see what we can get our hands on around here. I want every single stack of that. I'm gonna need all the fuel. I'm gonna need to recrew up. So we'll grab all of our crewmen. Uh, these guys actually... Oof, if I could take those to Thule, we could make like three times our money almost. I think we should probably do it. I know that we're like, we'll come back. We'll come back. In Magek, there's a trade opportunity, but I have a job with a time limit right now. We should go do the time limit job before I do anything else. Oh, yeah, supplies. I do want to go to Nova Maxios. Maybe we'll go to Conta's Den. I don't know. So you know how we used to have money? I don't have money anymore. That's the name of the game in Star Sector. It's easy come, easy go. I'll have like a half a million bucks and I'll be back down to 20,000 every single time. Let's jump to hyperspace and I'm gonna show you how the surveying system works. This game does have salvaging, uh, so you can find destroyed space fleets like way out in the middle of nowhere. You can salvage them. There are actually rare named vehicles and things in this game too that you can find floating out in the reaches of space where nothing's been explored. Uh, we need to go to Zaphon, right? Kind of hard to tell, but I think we're going to Zaphon. It's 50,000 bucks just to go touch this thing and come back. So I'm going to go touch it, and then we're going to come back. This was actually a gnarlier trip than I thought it would be. That entire area is just like squirrel hold uh, with like slip, there's like slipways, there's like nebulas. That was a really nasty flight. I'm not exactly sure if that flight was even worth it. Let's see, there are jump points, there are drive field activity a short distance away from the 
exit. A disposable probe sends back a microburst of information. Forces near the exit are assessed as hostile as a possible threat to your fleet. Okay, let's maybe not go in that way then. Maybe we'll go in right here. I mean, they said it was camped, so our mission, I think, is to find a volcanic world. Yeah, there it is right there. So let's go ahead and we'll head in that direction. I'm not going to use the thrusters right now just because... I don't want anything to really know that I'm here. I would prefer that my fleet signal be very, very small at the moment. At least as small as it can be without going too nutty. But this is the world that we're supposed to be surveying for one of the factions. Let's do our survey. It's going to take some supplies and some crew. We found rich ore deposits. We found rare ore deposits. Rich rare ore. So this place has rich ore and rich rare ore. This would make a really good manufacturing hub. And I mean when I say that, you can actually build a base on this planet. You will have a population. They will have needs. They will have things that they want. You can set up trade lanes to supply them in between your own planets. Like, you can, for all intents and purposes, make, like, your own faction in this game. See? There's establish a colony right there. You can consider other factors. If there was an enemy base on this planet, we could orbitally bombard it if we wanted to. Uh, we could actually use chemical warfare on it if we wanted to. We could hit it with a planet cracker. We can do all kinds of cool stuff once you get to, like, the late game. You trying to fight me, bro? Says he's hostile. That's probably not good. We should probably maybe, like, drift our way out of here. I think they're trying to head us off, though. It looks like that other fleet's trying to get in front of us. Okay, yep, we should leave the neighborhood. These right here are redacted fleets. I'm not going to tell you what they are, because that's part of the fun of the game, is exploring and figuring it out for yourself. Yeah, that little maneuver right there. Oh, no, you got me with the interdiction pulse, dude. It killed my speedy engine, but at least let me get me out of that bad situation. We got a... Did I already get my paycheck? Oh, I already got my paycheck. Nice, they wired. I thought I had to go back to civilized space where there's, like beacons and stuff in order to get my paycheck nope jump to hyperspace goodbye killer robots all right let's go northwards we'll head on back and we had that trade opportunity in mcgeck we'll see if that still exists because i think we actually have a chance to flip around a lot of money right there pulling up on mcgeck we'll pull on into right here and we'll kind of see what happens we'll turn our transponder on just in case uh, that guy's going to Kanta's den, which means he's probably a pirate fleet, would be my guess. You a pirate fleet, sir? He's avoiding contact with us, so yeah, he's being a little jumpy. He's being a little jumpy right now. Mm, should I beat up the pirates? Yeah, we haven't had any combat. Let's go ahead and we'll beat them up, I guess. Do they have those guys mothballed? Is that what happened? They got attacked or something? Hmm. Let's pursue him. We'll take command of the action. We'll deploy everybody. This is probably a waste of supplies just to bully these enemies right here. But like, ah, who cares? We've only had one combat in this episode. How can you only have one combat inside of a Star Sector episode? You need way more than that. All right, let's pull on up. And this guy right here is a carrier. So basically, he's no threat to us whatsoever if you can close the gap with him. He's dead. This should be kind of like a gimme fight. This is not a tough fleet right here. These guys are much, much softer than we are. But it does give us a unique opportunity to resupply. That one's trying to get away over there. Okay. They've still got a few that are trying to run from us. But I'm hoping we can resupply decently well enough from this. Every single ship in this game has a special ability. I don't know if I talked about that in the opening sequence, but every single ship has an F key ability, something it does, like that guy's little dash that he just did, or that guy's teleport. For me, it puts my weapons into overcharge mode and makes them hit super, super ridiculously hard. But different ships have different abilities. Some can go invisible. Some have like a plasma thing that they do. There's a, there's a bunch of different things. This guy's really kiting. The AI, uh, pretty, it's okay. I mean, it knows the model of ship it's flying. The AI will definitely self-preserve if it can help it, if it's playing kind of like a fast and speedy ship. All right, there we go. We're done. Uh, I don't really care about ship recovery. Ship recovery doesn't feel relevant to me. Oh, good. 127 supplies, a little bit of fuel, some heavy armaments. Very nice. We'll pawn those off somewhere. The pirates aren't going to be happy about it, but since when do we care what the pirates think about anything? Uh, we wanted to go to... Uh, John Cena down here, or Tom Cena, or whatever it's called. Tomasino. 
And then we wanted to get ourselves all of those drugs, actually. We were going to try to smuggle drugs. Drug smuggling in Magek. Let's see if they've still got a good deal on these guys. Uh, we lost the really good deal. But the place where they want me to take them is in the Persian League. So there was one. That's double your money right there if you can pull it off. I liked the triple my money option better, but we had to go chase down that survey quest before the time ran out. All right, well, we basically double our money if we take these recreational drugs up to Kazaron. What we're going to do here is this game actually has some realism to it. What we're going to do is we're going to buy some of the drugs on the black market. And I know my transponder is on. We're going to buy like 100 of these guys, maybe like 150 on the black market. Then we're going to go to the legal market, and we're going to buy the rest there uh, with the tariffs and whatnot on it. That's okay. Like, the tariffs are going to cost us a little bit of extra money, but we're doing a pretty good job right now sort of, like, obfuscating the trade that we just made. So you kind of want to mix it together. It's called integration, all right? If you're smuggling, look, 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 look. So you have a pile of ore, right? And let's say that I put this legal pile of ore in here. And then I go over to the black market, correct? And in the black market, I take the illegal pile of ore and I mix it with the legal pile of ore. How is law enforcement going to verify what is the illegal ore and what is the legal ore? That's what I'm doing right here. And the game actually takes that into account because it's that detailed of a game. Uh, with 250 of these bad boys... Let's see if we get dinged by the cops on our way out. We did not get dinged by the cops on the way out, so they're not aware of the fact that we did an illegal transaction. Good. So we've got 250 of these drugs. If we take them up to Kazaron and Thule, we should be able to make some decent money. And when we get to Kazaron, we're actually going to smuggle and sneak on into town and, and unload the goods so that we get the full price. Okay, so we're off, off and away to Thule. I'll let you know how the trip goes, and if it ends up being profitable. I hope it ends up being profitable. Trade in this game is usually pretty good for your wallet. It's fairly rare that I feel like trades don't work out for me. Sometimes you head on the way over there, and someone fills the order before you can arrive, and you get skunked. That's a little bit of a bummer. Be careful about flying too close to stars. They do have a gravity well that'll cause you to consume a ridiculous quantity of supplies if you end up inside the gravity well of the star. So, because supplies are so pricey, like, that's the number one way, in my opinion, uh, that the game deducts cash from you and, like, keeps the economy from going too nutty and crazy is through the purchasing of supplies. Uh, supplies usually cost you 40000 here, 50000 there, 70000 there. They're, they're kind of pricey. Now, let's go ahead and we'll get into the skull gravity well. Hopefully we don't get jumped when we come in here. And now we needed to drop this off at Kazaron, but we need to get into Kazaron without getting caught by the fuzz. Do they have any protectorate free fleets? I only see one protectorate fleet right there. Oh, there's like three or four fleets. Not great. Not super ideal. Uh, we'll pull into the station, and we I guess we're not going to be able to unload the... Well, we're going to have to. They'll only buy it at the black market. That's 80000 that we just made, so that was a, a cool 40000 profit for a very short run. Like a run that didn't really matter at all. We also have this Class 3 data that I can sell while I'm here. Uh, selling on the black market incurs no tariff. The only way... I think you can get the tariffs down if you join a faction, and you're, like, part of their military. But other than that... Every faction in this game is engaged in, like, hardcore economic warfare with one another, so they have, like, 30 or 40% tariffs on each other's goods. And so it, it's it's pretty steep and nasty. Uh, we probably, if we don't want to get caught, we should probably go to the open market, and we should probably buy some fuel. There we go. And that's like 600 units of fuel. I'm hoping that that makes up for what I just did and that we don't end up getting caught. They want 62 a unit on those, so that's not a very good price. Wow, if I take those to Kanta's Den, I can get a thousand bucks a pop. 
even with the tariffs, like I could do this trade legally and still make money. I feel like that's going to dry up though. Like, can I get down there fast enough to sell 400 of these? All right, well, let me get my gas first. And let me see if the cops are going to be on me real quick. The cops do not appear to be aware of the transaction because they tend to instantaneously turn around once they become aware of it and just, like, run you down. Oh, that's too pricey. Okay. This is risky. This is like a make-it-or-break-it run right here. Like, with 200 guns, if I can get those over to Kanta's den, we'll make 200 grand. We'll basically, like, double our money even if we sell it legally. I have to try. I have to. Like, it's too much money to not try. Ah, and that brings me to a level up. This game is an RPG, as I mentioned in the title. This is your character screen. You have a whole bunch of talents. You also get other pilots that are named characters and have attributes and things like that. You can also assign their skill points. Uh, in this game, leveling up matters. You only get 15 levels. So level 15 is the maximum level in the game. You get 15 picks out of these stacks right here. And each one of these is hugely consequential. Like they give you new abilities. They change the way your fleet works. They give fat bonuses to certain types of ships, but not others. Like they reduce your fleet maintenance. They, they do all kinds of stuff. And so this is the place where if you wanted to specialize in being a carrier group, you would do that. If you wanted to specialize in being like a big... 30 unit frigate tackle squad and use wolf pack tactics you would do that if you wanted to be all big ships like cruisers that specialize all in rotary machine guns you would do that through here there's a ton of customization here and the customization is actually fairly simple like you click one button and you get like five bonuses towards a certain play style uh, with each of those buttons which is a really cool thing about this game is that there's a lot of complexity to it but it's a very simple and easy game to pick up well it's time to see if we made our fortune or if we're hosed that's all that matters here there's a derelict over there too are they happy with me right now sometimes pirates are mad at me yeah they're mad at me so i gotta turn off my transponder before they'll let me dock all right so in the black market two hundred and twelve thousand credits we're back in the money we're back in the money. All right, we're no longer suffering from space poverty, which is so much worse than terrestrial poverty. By orders of magnitude. I can also afford to, like, resupply my fleet right now. So, like, I'm going to do that because I can afford it. It cost me 50 grand off the top, but we're still 60 grand in the black right now after a transaction that just made us a lot of money. Trading, right? Uh, let's go ahead and we'll pull up off the station. We should get XP, I think, for trading. If you do, like, a really good trade. At least I thought you got XP for trading in this game. I don't know. Either way, we made a butt ton of money and things are looking pretty good. But this is Star Sector. I think this game is utterly fantastic. I have no complaints about it. If you ask me, it's like the second coming of space simulators between this and X4 and Elite Dangerous. You basically have an endless amount of of game to play in space but this one in my opinion is the most polished the most tuned the most balanced the most interesting and the most diverse and so if you're into space games you owe it yourself to go check out star sector i wholeheartedly vouch for the game my name is splattercat i sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to today up on the chopping block i was giving you a little toe in the pond with star sector one of the better games of the last 10 years or so in my opinion and especially wild considering the fact that it has no Steam distribution. The developer has just been going it alone through his own website since like 2012 or like 2013 when the game started development. Good stuff, man. Always fun to come back. I'll catch y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. And that's all I got for you. Bye, folks.